Uh, now on to the issue about the coronavirus. A lot of different things. One, we had an opportunity yesterday to have a conference call with mayors and county judges as well as other local officials across the entire state of Texas. On that conference call were about 1,100 local officials that we had the opportunity to visit with and let them know what is going on with the state response about the coronavirus as well as what we can do to help local officials uh, in their response to COVID-19. In addition to that, uh, we were able to receive and answer dozens of questions of issues that were on their minds, questions involving uh, interpretation and application of the statewide executive order that are issued for uh, stay at home, uh, issues about testing, issues about uh, all different kinds of uh, concerns or complications or questions uh, they may have had. Uh, it's something that uh, we were very, very pleased to have with us, Congressman Kevin Brady. One of the issues that we all face uh, is our ability at the local and state level is to make sure that we are uh, being able to respond very aggressively from the economic perspective to help these local communities and local businesses and individuals be able to economically rebuild uh, as a consequence of everything that has happened related to the coronavirus. Fortunately, Kevin Brady, who was heavily involved in formulating the legislation that passed and understands it inside and out, was able to provide keen advice concerning the economic recovery program concerning the paycheck protection program as well as a discussion about the ability for local governments uh, to be reimbursed for COVID-19 related expenses. So let me use this as a reminder to all officials whether they be state or local. The federal government has provided uh, an unprecedented amount of financial resources for governments at all levels to be able to fully and robustly respond to COVID-19. It is essential uh, as you encounter expenses that you retain receipts uh, for those expenses to ensure uh, that your jurisdiction is gonna be able to be reimbursed as fully as possible. With regard to these uh, phone calls that we're having with local officials, uh, these phone calls will continue on a weekly basis. Uh, next is testing. And one thing that we want to continue to do in the state of Texas is to increase the amount of testing uh, that is taking place. And uh, one thing I want to remind people about, and that is as it concerns the, the way that testing is uh, being utilized today, uh, it's a little bit different than it was from the uh, early stages of our response to the coronavirus. In the early stages, uh, a lot of the uh, testing collection material or testing equipment itself was provided by the federal government. It could be uh, sent to us through FEMA or sent through uh, state health authorities. Now I would say that the majority of the testing that we see taking place is testing that's done at, at the private level, whether it be uh, private drive-through uh, testing facilities or hospital-oriented facilities or uh, private healthcare-related facilities. Bottom line is that uh, whatever the source may be, we are seeing more testing achieved in the state of Texas, and I'm very proud about something that will be happening very soon in Texas, uh, and that is an announcement by Walgreens in Texas to provide drive-through testing for the coronavirus. The sites uh, will be using uh, the Abbott Labs 15-minute uh, testing equipment so you can get a quick response, positive or negative, about whether or not you have the coronavirus. And each of these sites uh, may be able to be built up to administer as many as 3,000 tests per day. And so this will just be another way uh, in which our testing capacity will increase. Uh, with regard to testing and numbers like that, uh, we continue to see uh, at least a 10% increase per day uh, in the amount of, of testing that we're doing compounded daily uh, over the past week. Uh, as of earlier today, uh, there have been 96,258 Texans tested for the coronavirus. That means uh, either later today or tomorrow, uh, we will cross the 100,000 mark of the number of people who, who have been tested. Of those more than 96,000 people who have been tested, uh, 9,107 have tested positive for COVID-19. 
again, it seems like from the earliest days until today, the percentage of Texans who test positive for COVID-19 remains just under 10% of the total number of tests administered. As of today, there are 1,491 Texans who are hospitalized uh, as a result of their connection with COVID-19. And unfortunately, there are now 175 fatalities of situations related to COVID-19. Uh, yesterday uh, was the high water mark in the state of Texas for both uh, the number of people who tested positive as well as the number of fatalities. So we see both of these numbers continue to increase. Now, one of the areas that's getting hit the hardest is the Harris County area. Uh, one thing that we are seeing is that people continue to test positive and the number of people testing positive in the Harris County area is increasing very rapidly. Similarly, deaths continue to rise in Harris County. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to have a private phone call conversation with Vice President Pence, where among other things, we spoke about the situation in Harris County. In fact, he raised the issue with me because he wanted to make sure uh, that Harris County was receiving everything that it needs to respond to COVID-19. After that, I called and spoke with uh, staff for uh, the county judge in Harris County uh, to ask what they need to, to make sure they would uh, be receiving what they need, one of which is testing, uh, which we're working to get their way. Uh, another was a request uh, for more masks, and we overnighted to them 125,000 masks to help them uh, respond to the situation they're dealing with right now, uh, with more to come after that. Uh, one thing that we need to emphasize uh, with regard to what's going on in Harris County as well as elsewhere, but particularly in Harris County at this time. And that is, it's more important now than ever for people in Harris County to maintain these distancing practices, to stay at home. As I mentioned, we are seeing a rise in the people testing positive in Harris County as well as elsewhere in the state of Texas. But remember this, these numbers are lower than they would be if it were not for the distancing practices that people are employing right now. It is essential that uh, we do more uh, to reduce the number of people that test positive as well as do more uh, to reduce the number of deaths. And we can really do that by only one way right now. And that is by everyone doing more to ensure that we are applying these stay at home policies. If you're not involved in uh, providing essential services, it's so important for your health, for your safety, for the safety and health of your family members, as well as even for your own life, that you simply stay at home. It will be frustrating, I realize. I know this is something that no one really cherishes to do, except if you step back and think about it. And that is, by you staying home, you're ensuring that you are doing your part to make sure that you are not contracting COVID-19, that your family is not going to be exposed to COVID-19, that you will not be involved in any type of process of spreading the coronavirus in the state of Texas. Working, working together to make sure we continue these distancing practices for just a short time more, we will ensure that we do all we can to spread, to reduce the spread of the coronavirus in Texas. Now, one thing that I continue to do to help the state and local response to the coronavirus is to continue to issue executive orders that make that response even stronger. Yesterday, I issued an executive order uh, to help those uh, who work at pharmacies because pharmacies, just like other healthcare related workers, are being inundated with uh, requests for their services. And one way that we were able to assist that uh, is to help pharmacies who are under this increasing demand uh, respond uh, by expanding their forces. To do that, I temporarily waived some regulations to allow pharmacy technicians and pharmacy interns to be force multipliers to help licensed pharmacists do even more. An issue that a lot of people in the state of Texas are interested in is uh, what is going on at the Texas Workforce Commission uh, and what is happening with regard to the incredible volume of unemployment benefit claims that have been filed. 
there has been an extremely high volume, uh, in fact, a record-setting volume. And let me give you some numbers. The Workforce Commission reported its largest spike in calls ever uh, to its benefit claims line on March the 26th with about 1.7 million calls received in one day. The line averages about 120,000 calls a day. Well, the Workforce Commission has taken in more than 600,000 claims already in a two-week period since uh, the coronavirus fueled spike occurred. And uh, they will likely process even more claims in the five-week period that started in March than it did in all of 2019. Well, to help the process with the claims, the Workforce Commission has hired and brought in hundreds of additional staff to make the turnaround a whole lot quicker in the processing of these claims. I'm proud to announce also uh, that with the leadership of the uh, Lieutenant Governor as well as Speaker, about 250 members uh, of House and Senate staffers uh, are pitching in to help with the processing of unemployment benefits claims. Now the Workforce Commission wants to do even more to ensure that everyone who may be eligible for unemployment benefits will receive those benefits. As a result, one thing that the Workforce Commission has done is uh, they are urging workers whose claims were previously denied to reapply because many that were denied may now qualify as the state and federal labor departments have expanded programs to help ease the fallout because of the record job losses. Another area that we are keenly focused on is the supply chain. We're very proud about the success that the supply chain strike force has been able to achieve and uh, the, the stats are amazing. And I don't have the stats with me, but know this, and that is uh, over the course of uh, this week, uh, we are, are assembling and disseminating almost 5 million masks across the state of Texas to ensure that uh, those in high demand uh, will be able to continue to uh, have access to the masks that they need. Another thing uh, that we uh, want to provide you information about is the number of hospital care facilities that are available to you, uh, people in the state of Texas to be able to respond to COVID-19. Uh, as of today, as of, make that as of yesterday, uh, there were uh, 21,066 beds available across the state of Texas, as well as 2,225 ICU beds that were available and 7,686 ventilators uh, that were available. Going back to supplies, let me say something in this context. One thing that we always see whenever Texas faces challenges, we see heroes surface to help respond to those challenges. We saw it in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey when we saw uh, the Cajun Navy, or we saw just individuals uh, from homes in and around the Harris County area uh, take out their bass boat or their canoe or sometimes even a kayak to go uh, try to rescue and help others. And just like we saw so many Texans helping others in the aftermath of Hur Hurricane Harvey, we're seeing the exact same thing take place today as we see Texans respond to the coronavirus in our state. Many businesses and individuals are helping Texas, especially with uh, our, the increase and the number of supplies that we can provide to those who need it the most. Let me highlight two today. As you know, there's great demand for what's called PPE or personal protection equipment, especially face masks. A Texas company has stepped forward to ramp up production that will create a pipeline of supply on an ongoing basis for the state of Texas. The company's name is Prestige Ameritech. They're located in North Richland Hills in Tarrant County. The founder and CEO is Dan Reese. The executive vice president is Mike Bowen, and I had a chance to visit with both of them to thank them for what they are doing. Because at a time in need, especially for uh, the face masks that are in such high demand, we needed uh, an automatic supply that we would be able to rely upon both immediately 
but in an ongoing way. And they are capable of providing exactly that. As I understand uh, the history of this facility, what they did is, is they, they bought a location that had been previously used by Kimberly Clark. The Kim Kimberly Clark uh, abandoned in order to uh, move those manufacturing operations to Mexico. And Prestige and Maritech really wanted to focus on doing manufacturing in America, showing uh, our own manufacturing capability. And so uh, they used uh, this facility uh, that had been abandoned by Kimberly Clark to make products right here in the Lone Star State. What they're doing is uh, they are adding a shift manned in part by the Texas National Guard wrapping up to be able to supply about 2 million face masks per week to be utilized by uh, those who need them in Texas.